With that, we are going to move on to our last overview, which is actually building dashboards. So first of all, getting started, we're going to return to that dashboard menu on the left hand side, the very bottom option uh, that manage dashboards buttons, and we're going to walk through the process of creating a new dashboard. So once you've clicked that, this is the manage dashboards menu that is going to pop up and it's pretty straightforward. You're going to click add a dashboard here. You're going to give that dashboard a name, hit save. Um, you're then going to use these uh, three faint horizontal lines to move that around. If you don't want that to be at the very bottom of your menu, um, you can bring it up so it's easier to find if it's something you're going to be working with day in, day out, just so you don't have to do a bunch of scrolling. Um, this is also something you can do and can and should do, uh, even if you're not creating a new dashboard. If you hit manage dashboards, you do not have to add anything. You can just drag these around so that they're in an order that makes sense to you and your day-to-day -day workflow. And once you've made whatever changes you want to with adding that new dashboard or moving things around, you're going to hit done here uh, to close out and move on. This is where you're going to be taken. Uh, once you have completed that process, you're going to have an invitation to tell your data story. Uh, you are going to be the own one owner and only person who has access to your draft dashboard until you decide you want to change that. And the first thing you're probably going to do is start adding cards. This can either happen after you've created a bunch of cards on your data sets, or maybe this is the place that you're starting and this is where you want to create cards from. Either way, uh, you can you can do that from here. I believe this plus sign is where you would go to add a card. Um, but let's, for this case, say that you have already created cards and you're ready to actually start putting some cards on that dashboard. You're going to have two avenues to actually get to the edit dashboard menu. You can either click on this wrench, the kind of universal sign of I'd like to make changes on this object in Domo, or you can hit this yell, uh, this orange edit dashboard button here in the center, which will be the one time you see it. It won't be available once you start adding cards. All right, so some of the first things that you're going to see in the editing layout once you hit edit dashboard um, is this, because there's not going to be any colors there. This is a smaller section, of course. Um, this will go across the entire screen. I just wanted to be able to zoom in to talk about the icons that are going to be most important to you. Um, so as far as the options here, the thing that you're going to be most interested in doing is changing the background color. Um, that's probably the only thing that's going to be of use here, at least for getting started. Uh, and the rest of, you know, adding content and changing how it looks is going to be on the right hand side. I'm just going to walk through these super quick. Um, header is to add header text. Uh, I will disclose that this is not something that we use often on our dashboards these days. We usually go down to this add text, uh, add text button down here instead, which has a couple different font sizes and presets that you can choose from instead. Um, you can also go to a preset layout. This will give you kind of like an already organized uh, block of cards, depending on the number of cards that you know you want to add. This is also not something that we use very often, um, but it is available and it may be useful to you. Uh, this is something that you, this is the one you're going to use the most, the add data card. Um, you can see it's like a tiny bar chart here, um, but this is what you're going to click if you want to create a new card or you want to add a card that has already been uh, created by you or by someone else. You're going to drag this to the dashboard and leave it there. And then you'll have the option to select what card should go there. Sort of similarly for an image, you would drag this onto the dashboard and then you would get a menu to upload the image. Or I believe if you've already uploaded some images, maybe select from um, things that you already have. And then text would be the other one that we use very frequently. And this is the obvious one for text. And also we'll use these for just like formatting color blocks. Um, again, if you're not if you're not using a preset layout or even if you are, um, but you don't want to use a certain square, um, either just because there's nothing to put there, um, or it just makes it easier to look at to have some metaphorical white space. Uh, this is a good way to kind of be able to adjust that. Um, and you can change the background so it matches the dashboard background, kind of whatever you need. Finally, this isn't something we use much, but if it's if it's useful to you to have a dividing line, um, I guess there are some places we use it, but uh, 
Domo has a preset one. You can also like upload your own horizontal line, which we've, all, we've also done as an image. That's how that would be brought in. Um, but these are all these presets that like you don't have to bring in an image. You don't have to have to have certain tools already. You can you can use these and they'll do a pretty good job. All right. So adding those data cards, as we mentioned before, let's say I had dragged this data card icon to my dashboard. This is how it would appear. It would hold this square shape and I would have an invitation to specify what content I wanted to add. Um, so I'd click this menu, and then if I wanted to create a new card, I'd click this, and it would take me to an analyzer interface, and the first thing I'd need to do is select a data set there, but I could totally do it that way. Um, more likely, uh, you might want to add an existing card. So you click this, a menu would pop out, and you'd be able to search for the card that you were looking for, and then that would appear here, um, loaded as you had designed it in the interface. So here is a card that I've already loaded on this test dashboard. And let's kind of go through what some of the display settings are and different ways I could customize that. So the first thing I'd want to do is hit it, uh, hover over this. And instead of if I were not in the dashboard editing view, I would get that wrench and I'd have the card details, the menu that would let me save as or move and copy along with other things. But here, because I'm in the dashboard editor view, I get a different edit content menu. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click that, and then I'm going to select display settings. And the menu that's going to pop out here is going to allow me to specify, do I want a summary number to show? Do I want the card title to show? Uh, if there's a time frame, if this is grouped by a certain date part, I think the default is to specify that. So if this were like a bi-month thing, it's not, but uh, I could I could decide whether that was shown or not. So you'll be able to click onto this. You'll see what's already checked. You'll be able to check or uncheck things, um, which will also make some changes for like the dimensions of how your chart auto formats, given the space that you've left for it here. Related to display settings, we'll also talk about card interactions. And card interactions are exactly what they sound like. They determine how a card does or doesn't respond when a user clicks or filters. So this allows you to, to determine, do I want this card to be filtered by the dashboard's filters? Unfortunately, you cannot specify yes to some of them, no to others. So it's kind of a, a big universal choice. Um, but the main configurations you're going to want to set are uh, what happens if someone clicks on a card. Um, the default we usually go with is this one, that I want the card to open in a new tab. Uh, and then the other default we go with uh, for the second main question is what happens uh, to the other cards if I click a card or a data point? And in most cases, uh, it is best to leave this unchecked, checked, which means I do not want me clicking on one card to filter every other card connected to that data so source on the dashboard. Um, because what will happen if like, I were to click on the December month for form submissions on a hypothetical line chart. If this were checked, um, then all of the other cards would filter by December for those form, for whatever they were showing, um, which is less likely to be what you actually want. It can be really confusing. It's not necessarily clear to users that they've added another filter. Um, so as far as like just keeping things pretty simple, pretty intuitive, and easy to walk back if someone does something that they didn't actually want to do, um, I would strongly recommend these presets and then have a good idea of why you want to make changes to other presets um, if to be able to, to make the case for making them. And then lastly, let's say that you finally built that dashboard and you want to share it. You want to share it with your team. You need to share it with your stakeholder. We're going to talk about the different ways you can access this. Unsurprisingly, there's two places. They're really close together, but they are different. Um, so you can choose whichever one makes most sense to you or whatever you intuitively click first. By default, as I mentioned before, when you create a dashboard, you are going to be the only one who has access to it. So if you were to send someone a link to that dashboard, they would not be able to get in. Um, so you will definitely want to do the extra step of sharing it with someone before, uh, before you actually take the step of sending them that link. 
So the two easy places you can get to the share option are to click here on the plus person icon or to click this sort of like general export button, which also has a share option for some reason. These will take you to the exact same menu where you can specify which Domo users you'd like them to be shared, this to be shared with, uh, as well as if you would like them to get an email notification, and if so, what that notification should be. Um, sharing is something in particular that we have uh, a video for already uh, as part of our how to use this dashboard uh, option for VFS teams. So not only is there written documentation specifically for uh, VA platform universe users, um, there is also like video content of this already. So um, I think that is included in the resources links as well, just as another option if you get stuck with this. So finally, a perfect segue to those resources. I'm going to walk through these really quickly. Uh, the Domo e-learning courses, if you click this link, you are probably going to be taken to a pop-up page where you need to enter your Domo instance. Uh, this is even true if you've already logged into Domo. Um, you are going to want to put lowercase va-govin and you should then be rerouted to their like entire e-learning platform. Um, there's a lot of pre-made courses you can take. Some are for like specific uh, stages of your learning, like just getting started. And you can also take like uh, different courses organized by um, whatever your use case is. If you are someone who is building in Domo, if you are someone who is gonna be really focused on bringing data into Domo, if you're just someone who's gonna be focused on consuming data in Domo, then maybe this entire training we've just done isn't that useful to you but maybe that one is up your alley. All good things to know. This link is going to take you to uh, Domo's deep, deep cavern of so much documentation. So how to configure a specific card, what your different options are, constraints are with a specific card or a specific data type or a specific connector. Um, if you can think to ask it, it is probably here. And if not, you should probably be able to find from there uh, Domo's Dojo, which is its internal, not internal, um, but it's user message boards where people can post questions and answer each other. Um, and there are some Domo employees who weigh in as well. Um, but this written documentation should really cover the bulk of your needs um, once you have a good sense of what question you actually need to ask. And then finally, there are a couple options from us, the Platform Analytics and Insights team. Uh, so the first is that web page on the Depot website that we have for VFS teams, how to use this dashboard, which is specifically for how to use our standardized dashboards, um, but has actually a lot of basic Domo how-tos as well. So if you're interested in like mimicking the existing logic of, um, of Domo dashboards that you may have seen in our VA instance already, this could be a good place to start, even just for kind of like the basics of navigation if you're really just getting started. Um, I've also linked here our team's internal documentation. Again, this is related to uh, our, our standardized dashboard initiative, but this has a like by the card type, all of the chart property presets that we wanted to configure to make everything look the same. Um, so if you're looking for uh, an extremely exacting level of detail, but like very clear directions of what to do for different card types to make things look like things you may have seen on Domo already, um, this will give you that that level of detailed direction. Um, and so while it's certainly not necessary reading, um, it might be a nice thing to turn to if if you just kind of want to want to have some options out of the box already for how to configure things and make them look a certain way. And then lastly, we do not have this listed, uh, but it has regular, regular updates in our VFS analytics Slack channel. Um, you can come to our analytics office hours. Um, obviously, we are also holding those to serve VFS teams, um, but we do have the option to do breakout rooms there, and we can certainly answer questions related to the platform health metrics initiative there. We will also be holding some specific Q&As for platform teams coming up. So. If you've made it this deep into the training video, fantastic. You did exactly what we hoped you would do before you showed up there um, to answer any questions that this training did not answer because um, it, it had no, no hope of covering everything, but hopefully has uh, you know, whetted your palate for things that you want to be able in Domo and have specific questions about. 
um, and has given you also more of a frame of reference for sort of how to how to navigate what is possible, what is discoverable in Domo. Um, so with that, happy building. Feel free to ask us questions on Slack and office hours anywhere, and um, we look forward to working together. Thanks so much.